Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Sonoma Side Show, that is. Recorded at Grim Reaper Studios, located somewhere at the base of the beautiful Blue Mountains in eastern Oregon. I'm your host, Les, the Snowman Kenny. Good show tonight. We've got Lauren Davis. Lauren is a 20-year-old EMT and fire program student at COCC in Central Oregon. She's also a barista. Uh, We're going to talk to her about her love of adventure, her social interests, and touch on uh, the mental health topic of anxiety and how it affects our lives. I've got some experience there myself. Also, a special musical performance by my dog, Otson. So stick around for that. You're going to love that. And we are also going to reach out to Southeast Texas, as usual, and see what's going on with pork chop. So that should be fun. Anybody see that tornado footage of that red GMC or Chevy pickup and it gets spin, spun around and flipped all around and then it lands back on its wheels and the guy drives off and turns out it was a 16 year old kid it's just insane and right away my brain after I you know he was okay and everything I'm thinking if I was an executive at GMC I think I'd somehow put a spin on that you know like our products can withstand tornadoes it wasn't that new of a truck, but still. Anyways, it's going to be a good show. We'll get things going here shortly. Until then, enjoy Big Steve and the train wreck. Hey, wizards and wizards, it's your boy Magus here. Not only do I like to produce and release podcasts, I also like to listen to podcasts. And one of my favorite shows to listen to is Noman Side Show. Go check them out. It's great stuff. Great stuff for great minds like yourself. Stay frosty. Stay gold. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show my good buddy, Otson Kinnear. The Yorkie. Hi, Yacht. How are you? Do you want to uh, show the world your singing ability? I think it's important. Yeah? All right. Sing your favorite, one of your favorite songs. You. You. Yeah. <coughs> Man, that's good, bro. Good job. Beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Southeast Texas to Pork Chop. Kevin Klutz, what's going down? Hey, Snowman. I got I got a, per- a PSA for everybody. Ooh, all right. Um, man. I just want to tell you, right here in my backyard, southeast Texas, Mm -hmm. I got the biggest, you know, the tallest and the oldest bridge in Texas. What? In the whole state. No way. Right right here. Uh, 10 miles away. Really? Yeah. Do tell. It's it's a hundred and... 60 something feet something like that Mm -hmm. and uh well a little backstory yeah when when I was 15 years old going through driver's ed oh boy everybody had to go through that Mm mhm the big thing was you had to drive across this bridge it's scary it's there's no shoulders there's two lanes and it's steep and Nobody wants to drive this bridge. Well, today we had a bad accident on that bridge. Uh Uh-oh. And it was just caused by uh, carelessness. Um, 
just not paying attention. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know what it's like in the Blue Ridge Mountains, but here in Texas, people drive like crap. (laughs) (laughs) I just, I would just like for people to pay attention when you're driving. Yeah. You know, that's all I'm asking. How does a bridge, like, it it doesn't have any sort of (laughs) shoulder or rail or anything? It has rail. But there's no shoulder. Yeah. It's two lanes and a curb. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you got 24 foot, 12 right. foot lanes. Right. And uh, that's it. That's and, uh, I mean, a little, real quick, a guy broke down going up the bridge. The guy stopped behind him, put out some cones. Yeah. Just by chance, he had cones in his truck. And yeah, that's assisting the the other driver. And somebody come up, not paying attention, ran into him. Oh, now wait a minute. This and isn't that that kind of arcing bridge that I went over with you, is it? Abs- absolutely. Oh, it's, okay. All right. All right. I'm bridge. with you. That's a big bridge. And, yeah. Yeah, and it was about halfway up. And somebody come up in that left lane, wasn't paying attention, and plowed through them two vehicles. Yeah. There's fatalities. It's, it's horrible. Ugh, good Lord. It, I won't go into detail there because it's horrible. Right, right. And uh, all it takes is just paying attention. Right. You know? I hear you, brother. Uh, on to some good news. Guess what I got to do this week? <laughs> What's that? Play golf. Oh, yeah, that's right. You did go golfing. I did take advantage of this amazing weather mm-hmm. in southeast Texas mm-hmm. and uh, the amazing golf courses. But I tell you what, them greens were fast, son. Mm. Mm. Like putting on concrete. Yeah. Early. But, you know... Here we got a short window. We got about a month of good weather, and then it's too hot to go outside. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So you got to take advantage of it while you can. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, we got the South Texas State Fair going on. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And uh, good turnout. Good turnout. Uh, of course, we got great weather. Seems like every time the fair comes to town, the rain comes to town too. But I think we're dodging a bullet in here. Nice. And uh, this is it's a great time. Nice. But uh, you know, that's about it. You know, in okay. Southeast Texas. Well, let me ask you this: What's on the grill this weekend? Oh man. I think I'm going to do some ribs, brother. Really? It's, it's, it's been long overdue. Yeah. I kind of had so many last year that I haven't got into it yet, but I'm getting close. I've got a, you know, I don't want to brag, but I've got a little brisket on there right now. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Trucker clock, who wants it? <laughs> 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 so, yeah, baby. I have a brisket on right now, and it's been on for like, I mean, forever, and it it's just gonna be delicious. Man, that you know that's my favorite thing to eat off the pit. Well, you know I'm gonna send you pictures, so. Yeah. Oh boy. It, well, it don't it don't take the place of the taste. No. no. But right. I'd love to see it. How's the How's the family doing? Everybody's great doing good all right has your brother brian ever expressed any interest of getting on the show no (laughs) you know he'd be perfect for the show he needs to be on the show yeah i think we need to get him on Uh, let's get him on delve Uh, deep you know get down to the root of everything (laughs) (laughs) oh that's funny well i tease i tease it would be fun to have him on but let me say What's that? He would have, he would have plenty to say. Yes, I can tell you that. I'm sure of that. 
That would be awesome. We're going to have to do it. Right on. Well, it's great talking to you. Uh, Just wanted to reach out to Southeast Texas to see what was going down for tonight's episode. So uh, thank you very much, and we will touch base with you soon. Rock on. All right. Welcome to the show. Tonight we have a special guest, Lauren Davis. Lauren, tell me how you ended up sitting in this chair tonight. Oh, my gosh. This is that a question? I know that's a wide <laughs> swapping question. but That is a wide swapping question. Well, I guess to throw Have we met there. before? We have not met before, no. This is so, our first time meeting. Yes, this is our first time meeting. You... So, for those of you who don't know, which is probably... Yeah, yeah, they're going to go, like, what do you do, kidnap her? No, I didn't <laughs> kidnap <no. laughs> just, uh, just my boy, the boyfriend's dad. Yes. So, meeting the parents for the first time, you know. Um, Not nervous at all. A little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I met the son um, on a dating app called Tinder a while ago. Oh, really? Yes. And then we were talking, well, actually, I guess... I didn't reply for a really long time, and he always likes to bring that up, <laughs> uh, that it was a few months, but it, I'm really glad that I, something about, I don't know, something was different with, like, yeah. when he'd be consistently replying back to me, and, like, I don't know, just something was different. I wanted to keep talking to this dude, and I'm really glad we did, because he got really sick, and I was like, oh, he doesn't want to hang out with me. Like, I was thinking he was just trying to dodge me, but the whole time he actually was really sick. Yes. And so then we finally, like, hung out, and it was just, like, it was good like it felt natural and so then you know we've been hanging out and um we're dating now he's hang out hung out with my parents a lot or not a lot but we've had like some dinners and gone to concerts so it feels like it's only right to be here yeah. meeting his parents now right on awesome. right on short short visit but we'll do other ones heck yeah uh, so tell me where you were raised where were you born and where'd you grow up so i was born in uh i guess the beaverton oregon area mm-hmm. and to kind of expand on that uh, like more or less Portland is what you could also group it in as and I grew up over there um, moved around there a few times but other than that I just moved to Bend about last year um, maybe over a, about a year and a half ago now at this point point. and your parents live there right uh, in Portland or no in Bend um, or Redmond so yeah my parents just also moved over to Redmond oh, oh um, so they're new there too okay yeah it was Um, it's nice because they I have enough space from them we're like I don't feel like they're crowding in on me and, like, having my own college experience. But at the same time, I really think that family is important. So I, hung out, I hang out with them a lot. Like, we do dinners, like, every Sunday night and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that's, like, um, it's nice that they're close enough to be able to do that. But, it's like, it's 30 minutes away. So it's like, okay, you stay over here. You know, we have, yeah. our, we have our towns. This is my yes. town. Stay back in yours. Right. <laughs> right. So, so what made you come to Central Oregon? Well, um... I guess, long story short, um, COCC brought mm-hmm. me over here, but I guess to kind of expand on that, um, I was looking into the fire science program here, mm-hmm. um, doing that, and so I kind of, for a long time, didn't know what I wanted to do when I was younger, and for a while in high school, too, like, I, you know, I didn't have a lot of goals, and I had... I guess I turned a lot of stuff around in my life and I found this like firefighting program and my parents were like you should go to this and I was like there's no way I'm going to this program like it's in a different town I don't know any of these girls firefighting is crazy because at that time too like like as a woman like hearing about other women firefighters this is a pure woman firefighting camp Mm. and so it was like it was like something that I almost have like never heard of before because you're like oh like woman in firefighting like that's you know I just you just don't really see I guess like a few years ago maybe it, it's different for other people obviously their experiences but i haven't seen a lot of women no i'm not firefighters. you don't hear about that especially a, a whole training session just for that yeah and so i ended up going to that it was like a three-day session and i we did the drills we put on the the gear um hit through roofs did forced entry um did some controlled fires just like doing extinguishers and stuff and like some hose work and i felt really powerful and like awesome and empowered and I like some kind of like spark went off in me that made me want to like make a plan and so I my family and I we'd always like 
um, vacationed in Sun River and Central Oregon, like, when I was younger, like, for mm-hmm. summers and stuff. Um, we'd go there for, like, you know, like, maybe five days or something at a time. And my dad would always talk about, hey, well, it's his dream to live in Central Oregon. And I guess maybe the pieces kind of just fell into place in that way, which was really nice in my life because I was able to find, like, the fire science program that was also just happened to be in, like, a really beautiful place that, like, yeah. I grew up going to. So I kind of already knew the area, and I feel like it just kind of really all connected, which is really cool. Yeah. But that was, know. like, a really long way, I guess, of explaining it. <laughs> no, there's not. It was no. Uh, uh, so, and, and since then, now what's the plan with the fire science program and all? Like, where does that lead? So with the fire science program, my – my whole plan at the end of this is to uh, be a firefighter paramedic and so I did wild firefighting last summer um, in Idaho and Montana in that area but um, I'm currently going to school for just structure fire science Mm -hmm. and then I was um, also doing the EMT program for a bit and I'm going to pick it up again next year and so while I'm doing this like the vision I guess is kind of hopefully getting in like on board at the station like affiliated with the fire station yeah. so i can at least like they help pay for my education and i work for them basically which would be an awesome experience like by the time i'm done with my degrees like the paramedic program and the fire science program i can go get a career somewhere like a full-time career which anywhere would be yeah awesome super awesome and so that's kind of i guess the hope for right now and then maybe go back even to school again to get my bachelor's so i can become a fire captain mm-hmm. um and then I guess besides like even besides school at the school I take part in like some community stuff like some clubs like I'm part of the LGBTQ club and then Mm -hmm. I'm starting a fire science club too Mm. and so those are things that like also I guess take up my time with like school wise but like yeah now what's the the fire science club why just like a study group or so basically we're gonna like um do like events and awareness and like to the like the whole goal is like I guess for club we meet and talk about things and kind of just have a place to like even be people with like the same interests kind of thing like it mm-hmm. doesn't like I guess for my other clubs like we meet once a week and we just talk and hang out and maybe we'll watch like a video or bring up a few talking points but really like it's the same people with maybe kind of like the same mindsets too or like they want to learn more and like are interested in something so I guess my whole vision with like the fire science club is to like um hopefully like put like information out into the community and like have our fire science students like take part and like take pride in like that I guess maybe kind of community outreach that we can like do and like hopefully in return maybe we can get some more funding like for the program Um, Mm because we don't have like a functioning apparatus or stuff like that um, for the school at CUCC right now and so definitely like it would be nice to like step up our program because it was cool like I don't get me wrong but like it was you know we could always, always be better and yeah. so I think to spread awareness and also hopefully maybe like like do some fundraising is yeah. kind of I guess the whole goal there. Right on. You want to talk about the LGBT club? I, I know there's other letters there, but um you know, I can't remember that much. You know? <laughs> yeah, um I just so I joined it a couple months ago and I was really nervous. I have like decent social anxiety sometimes, especially I guess with COVID. Like, Absolutely. I feel like I used to be so extroverted, but now maybe it's not the same. Like, but, um, so I was nervous to go. I kept getting, like, invited and stuff. And then I finally just went one day with my roommate. And it was super awesome. Um, you go, and I think one of the enticements, too, is honestly a free meal. But, <laughs> you know, um, good, that good college food. student thing. Yeah, because you, you get to go to the cafeteria, or sometimes they'll put in food orders. But it became more than that. It was cool. Like, I kind of mentioned with the fire science club, you have like minded people. Um, that you're kind of around and sometimes I guess and this isn't like oh poor me but it's I guess sometimes with like the people the work environment that I usually work in like with going to school um, like the fire science club is gonna obviously going to be like I feel like maybe a little bit different from the LGBTQ club and it's sure. nice to kind of have like different groups for different things yeah that, like um, that you never that you never even like have like had the option to like see those other kind of like people and opinions and like feel like you have some people sure. like which is actually something really cool that i like finally feel like developing a little bit of community too right at on. cucc which i haven't had a lot of community at school in the past right on so are do you plan on staying in central oregon or do you have any path that you care you're just gonna see where you go or 
Um, that's a good question. Because so... I mean, Central Oregon's beautiful, but of course the cost of living is higher. And yeah, stuff like that, <laughs> for but... real. But um, I guess I don't know when I am doing like my firefighting like training and stuff like that and accreditations for medical training and fire. I'm trying to take. I'm taking this quiz, and it's going to be to like qualify me to once I get my certifications, um, to like treat and like care for and like do stuff I learned in like I think maybe 48 different states I don't want to speak wrong but I'm trying to get my education in a way that will have doors open for me no matter what I decide to do where you decide yeah Yeah. exactly because I mean I don't know where I'll be you know after I finish my education and like um put in job applications because stuff always random stuff always opens up you know just little things that you find and I guess I don't know right that's a fair answer. I mean, I still don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> where I'm headed, what I'm, you know. So, um, do you, have you traveled much out of Oregon? Um, yeah, I've been to a few, few different places. Yeah, yeah like wh- not much of the country, but more or less like in state, like Nevada, California. Yeah. Um, or I guess Alaska, and then, uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. What state do you want to go to? Mm, I want to go to in wait in the U.S. or anywhere in, in the U.S. What state you want to go to that you've not been to yet? That's a good question. Um, Tennessee, Nebraska, I Florida. I can't think about. Oh, I, no, you I already said Florida. I'm really bad about like think because with each with each place is like a whole bunch of different like things that you could like fall under like what yeah. You would so it really do every state. Yeah, because, like, I guess the end goal is to, like, be really well-traveled and, like, yeah. so, like, I can actually form an opinion about, like, where I'd want to go again or, like, yeah, what to see. Because exactly. I guess I, when I even asking that, I just draw a blank. I'm like, huh, where do I want to go? Like, yeah. such well, an open Well, that's kind of cool, though, because you don't know. Yeah. And who does, right? So, <laughs> just, that's the fun part. But I do think Texas sometime would be cool. Yeah. Texas would be cool because I don't know everybody, everybody's like, oh, it's bigger. Everything's bigger in Texas. Yeah. But then exactly. also, hmm, I don't know. It takes like five hours just to drive across town yeah. because everything's so much bigger. But but I think that like out of out of like out of country like is where like I want to go more or less. So like I really like tropical places yes. and stuff like that. And so I'm like, <laughs> absolutely, I can't disagree with you there. Love tropical places. So is there any particular tropical places? I want to go to Thailand or the Philippines. Ooh. Oh, yes. I have heard good things. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that's a goal. So, like, I think something I like about Blake, your son, is that he wants to travel, too. And so that's something that we, like, kind of get along about is, like, we want to see more. And, like, I think that's cool because not a lot of people like to do that. Um, yeah. But I'm, like, one of the people who, like, wants to go and do something, like, a lot. Like, sometimes, like, I will have my lazy days, but... Right. I'm really, like, like, I like to adventure a lot. And so, like, getting lost in the forest or, like, going to a swim hole or something like that. It sounds Absolutely. like peak. Adventure. Yes, yeah. adventure. <laughs> now, does that, if you're an adventure person, are you much of a technology person? Mm. So, you know, are we going to find you on your phone all the time like everybody? Or are you more of a, you know, stay away from technology and, and kind of be out in the woods more? So I guess I'm a mixture of both. It really depends, I think, what's going on with my outside life. Like, sometimes, all like, I don't really, I don't have a lot of social media. I just have an Instagram. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are like, oh, you're weird. Like, you don't have Snapchat or you don't have this or that. And I'm like, I don't feel the need to be on my phone because I know if I have it, I will just mindlessly scroll. Yep. And I <laughs> do find myself doing that with Instagram. And sometimes, like, <laughs> like, like Lauren, <laughs> up here. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, didn't even realize. So you won't, it's like the tech, the technology will suck you in. Like, you don't even realize that, like, you're doing it sometimes. And so it just feels nice to, like, not reply to stuff and just, like, you know, go out in nature. But you got to reply yeah. to your, make sure to reply to your mom at least. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. But, and, and they, it's like everybody knows you have your phone. So why aren't you answering? Yeah. You know, it's like a ball and chain to me. It really like, does feel like I mean, that, not honestly. That we shouldn't answer, but. No, I feel the exact same way. It needs because, to be separate. Yeah, um, I do. I feel the exact same way, actually. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that part of it, but it is nice to be able to call somebody whenever I want. But. That's very true. Yeah, double-ended so. sword. 
So uh, what do you like to do? What if, if you were to tell somebody kind of what your hobbies are, what would you say? We know you like adventure. But anything particular, like um, uh, uh, any crafting or music yeah. or poetry or um, I'm really the arts. into so I'm really into snowboarding. Um, okay. I really like to snowboard, and then another thing I like to do on top of the adventure, I guess, is like maybe pack up my art bag somewhere and go do art in nature, which has been kind of cold recently, so I haven't been doing that as much, but. Mm-hmm. I really like to, not that I'm good at it, but do art and then snowboarding as well. Mm. It's, um, they feel like kind of like therapeutical things to me that I really enjoy doing. Sure. How long have you been snowboarding? So I think this year was my third season. Has nice. To be third. Nice. I tried it. Tried it one season uh, when I was Blake's age, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. I had never skied with regular skis, but I did buy a I, you know, it was the first time I got a credit card. I went right down to the local board shop. I bought a snowboard, boots. Oh wow, the whole Columbia setup. Ja- the whole <laughs> the setup. Whole this guy was, he was so excited when he saw me because I was. He like, always saw his dollar sign. Charge it! I'm gonna be a snowboarder. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And I actually really liked it. And, and all I did, I, I tried. I went to the bunny hill and I tried a couple times and I, it didn't make sense. So me and my buddy, we just got on the chair, went to the top. And by the time I got to the bottom, it clicked. <laughs> how, how to do stuff, really? you know? Yeah, I mean, I had wrecked a few times and it hurt, but then it made sense when I got found and I was no good at it, but I still understood. Okay, that's how this like the thing weight works. shifting, yes, and the that weight dynamics shifting and, and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, okay, all right, you know. Then you get cocky and you try to do something else, and exactly. And that yeah. was the part that was hard on me was the the twisting when you wreck. Yeah, I did. on my knees yeah. and stuff, but I guess skis would be just as bad you know yeah it, it's just hard because either way you're strapped into something that's exactly gonna, like, so you're not catch. giving it's gonna catch yeah, it's gonna catch and so <laughs> the rest of your body's going ouch but i remember like uh see my board was a rosignol i think really? no no not a, it wasn't a burden it was a rosignol yeah it was i can't remember the brand of it but yeah it, i mean the a sub sub brand of rosignol but you know I thought it was cool. <laughs> that know. is cool. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I do not know much about snowboards. Like I went to go rent one one season, like three years ago, and I got the setup, like everything for like a good price too. And the store closed due to COVID. And I called them a few times. It's like, hey, you want your stuff back? Never had to give it back. So I don't really know anything about my stuff because I just got it like a rental pair and then never gave it back. That's sick. It actually. is. It was. It was very lucky of me. But I definitely do need to like touch up on the snowboard. I don't knowledge. know the lingo either. I just know the brand that I paid, you know, on my credit card when yeah. I bought the thing. And <laughs> I can then see I how sold it. it I sold it a year later for pennies on the dollar to somebody else oh. who was, you know, so but well, you live and learn. You do. Uh, I jump around from hobby to hobby, but that one I did think was fun and I wish I would have went back and and done it some more. Now, did you do it before you went to Central Oregon? Um, I think yeah, so I moved to Central or, Oregon yeah, you've only... like a year and a half ago. So yeah, yeah. I did it yeah, a little bit, but it's definitely so much of a better experience over here because I can literally get out of class or work, drive thirty minutes, and be at the yeah. mountain. Like, it's nice. And like, Bend is a is a ski town. It is. You know, it's cool like that. I, I don't I don't know. It's nice. Like, I guess that's all I can really say about it. It's like I'm super blessed to be able to do that because growing up in suburbs, like, what did you have to do? Like, maybe go a walk on a path. Like, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's yeah. cool. Exactly. That is really cool. Well, so big plans down the future. I mean, where do you hope to end up? You know, always on an adventure, or do you hope to end up? Um, are you are you into politics? Are you into what are you into? Um, I think I'm into a lot of things. Like you kind of said, I'm kind of all over the board. I feel like I'd like to dip my toes in a lot of different things, but. I guess overall, yeah, but overall, like, I guess the main goal is to just kind of be, like, overall, like, have a happy, successful life. And, like, that sounds, like, so, like, basic and everything, but, like, to me, I guess it's, like, a deeper meaning of, like, success is, like, not just, like, income-wise, but, like, with the people you surround yourself with, like, having, like, a partner and, like, a quality relationship or, like, friendships, like, your job, 
um, your education, like things, something that I can be proud of. Like it's yeah. what I want in the future. And I think that I'm proud of like where I've um, already grown from, but I think that's something that I always hope for is like a really good future because I'm um, here putting the work in and like right on. you want to build to the building blocks, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So adventure list, uh, if you, have you done it or, or will you ever skydive? I would love to skydive. The okay. list, I think. Hot air balloon. Yeah, I want to do it. I haven't done it. There's a lot of stuff I think that like, like I said, I just want, I want to live a full life and like feel successful and like success in like my work in like play balance too. Like, yeah. and so, you know, work hard, play hard. Like I like to go adventure still and I want to do the, all the big toys, the hot air balloons and the boats and that kind of thing. Right. <laughs> motorized vehicles <laughs> i used to like to fly i mean you know be on planes even I, I to me that was an adventure when i would go on a plane but then i watched documentaries on discovery channel about plane wrecks oh, and geez. it really screwed me up <laughs> i bet uh, I, i've never since then and that would have been when i was in my early 20s i've never been able to fly without a zanny <laughs> <laughs> <You know>? yeah. <laughs> too much stress it's because I, I think of that plane crash and you know the, no yeah in the documentaries they always show the you know the uh, a computer imagery and they'll they'll reenact and it shows the front of the plane going and flying or whatever and i'm thinking yeah you know, there were people and like having anxiety too is like and i <laughs> it's like it's no joke like when you uh-huh. when you feel that in your chest people think it's like something easy that you can bring um, right, just like don't on be, or off, you know. Just, just don't be nervous, or just take some deep breaths, you know, or just yeah. you know think about something else. But anxiety is like, and that's something else that I'm kind of big on is like sometimes like advocating for like mental health. It's like anxiety is like something that we overlook a lot. Like it's yep. really serious. Like you <laughs> yeah. could literally like, I mean, I've had days where I've been barfing before like going somewhere because I'm so worked up. But then mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna act normal and like go. But like you know, like people all handle that stuff differently. But like anxiety is real like we joke about it but at the same time it's kind of it can be crippling like you know it's very crippling yes and it way it's it's a weight you you put on that face and you're happy all day and you yeah. do your thing and you go and you come home and you just go oh yeah and you're wasted because you spent a day faking it you know or, yeah or not most definitely it, and it's like it's somewhat faking it and also just i think the more normal you try to act like things just you know you stop thinking about it Mm -hmm. i guess sometimes like you just you know try to exist but yeah it's always there's always a little thought in the back of your head you're like so have you checked into like the whole area of mindfulness yeah i think that um over my life i've done a lot of different therapies and like Mm -hmm. different practices and um mindfulness techniques and like breathing things with like different therapists and stuff yeah and it's honestly some like good stuff that i do need to start implementing again but yeah yeah yeah. Oh, it's like going to the gym. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you come and go, you know, you feel like doing it for a while and then you don't. You know? Yeah. But, uh, no, anxiety, mental health, something we have to give more credence to. Yeah. Certainly for everybody, because you don't know what people are going through because we're all putting on this show yeah. when we see each other. Hey, how you doing? Glad. All right. And then inside you're going, I'm not all right. You yeah. Know, or whatever. You know? And so. it's always like what... It's hard because when you work jobs and go to school and stuff, it feels like you're always trying to do, like, to the maximum maximum (laughs) extent. Mm -hmm. Like, I realized recently that I'm kind of, like, and I see this in a lot of people, other people, too, like, in the FIRE program, at least, that, like, burnout is something that's real, too. Like, when you feel like you need to do all the things at once, and maybe sometimes I can attribute that to my anxiety because I feel, like, kind of disorganized, and I'm, like, trying to do this and this and this. But, like, Yeah. I honestly forgot where I was going with that. That's but. all right. That's all right. So, because I know where we're headed next, and that is, it's interesting to me that um, t- tonight, you know, we we have three dogs, and so you're allergic to dogs, are, but you used to work with dogs. So, let's tell me about that. So, kind of like um, this is something you know, actually a good quote that I'm gonna steal from Blake: "Do what you love, and the money comes." Mm-hmm. And I think that animals are really really comforting and i think when i was younger i didn't really want a job where i had to deal with a lot of people yeah and so doggy daycare i ended up doing that and i kid you not my face was swollen swollen (laughs) almost every day i've taken more zyrtec than probably any human should ever take and came out fine on the other end like 
uh, but something about that job That's dedication. was cool. It was, but it was definitely the dogs that made me stay there. Everything else, like the job, like the place I worked for, other like it was kind of it wasn't the best. I wouldn't exactly agree with all the practices, but yeah, um, sure. the dogs made it worth it. And I guess that's maybe why I was there so long. Yeah. And I think it's funny too, because I'm allergic to like allergens, pollen, everything outdoors. And then you bring in the wildland firefighting also. And it's like, <laughs> you really do what that's you love. That's hardcore, yeah. And whatever else will follow you, good things will follow. That's right. Hopefully. <laughs> that's right. I like it. Well, hey, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes. I know you guys are headed bowling and a big night out here to see the the hometown of your boyfriend but uh obviously it's not that big of amazing of a town but it is still it's pretty bigger cool, than so. i thought it would be yeah least. exactly so uh enjoy it and uh it has been very nice meeting you and learning a little bit about you and i hope to learn more about you and i hope that uh my son treats you good well thank you very much for having me on the show i really, really appreciate it yeah. <laughs> All right. That's a wrap. All right. That's a wrap. Oh, wait. You know what? It's not a wrap. It's not a wrap. There's one more thing okay. we have to do. One more thing. On my show, I always ask people. My grandfather always used to say, boy, spit wisdom. <laughs> so, and it was a way of saying, you know, tell me something truthful. Tell me something meaningful. So I always ask people, if you could go back in time, and I'm talking anywhere along that lineal calendar clear back to whenever and you could speak to whoever or a younger version of yourself or your parents or presidents or or any world leader who would you if you know you just had a couple minutes to go back in time and say something spit some wisdom to help them who would you speak to and what would you say that's a hard question it's terribly Um, hard i think because there's a lot of people that I'd say a lot of things to but <laughs> um at the end of the day honestly I'd probably talk to my younger self I think mm-hmm. and two things I guess come to mind is being patient and being present I think I'd tell my younger self that I like um it. because I think like I kind of mentioned I touched on anxiety a little bit and that's something I do struggle with my mind is always in a hundred different places at once. <laughs> and I think that's definitely affected. Although, and I guess I say this in a way that like, I would not change anything that I've ever done for anything because it taught me and brought me everywhere I am today. But hypothetically, I would tell myself, be patient yeah. and um, be present because I guess that's... I like it. Being present is actually sitting there and enjoying that life is good and not having yeah. to think about all the stress ahead of time because if Mm -hmm. i worry about something twice doing it and then thinking about it ahead thinking about doing it you're very wise but yeah very wise (laughs) because that's probably and i've said this even to people on the show it being present is probably my biggest battle yep i'm always thinking about i I do a lot of catastrophe thinking so i think about what's gonna happen down the road blake says i'm the same way (laughs) instead of just right now and enjoying you know the green grass right now instead of what green grass i'm gonna have a couple years from now or what do i need to do to get the green grass in a couple years from now so let's just relax stay in the moment i promise you i will do that you promise me you will do that i promise all right let's go live our best life heck yeah peace (laughs) all right All right, I want to thank tonight's guests, listeners, and sponsors. Bill Murphy Roofing, Wandering Wizard Concepts, Vertical Jigs and Lures, DLC Photography, The Shop, DieselFuelFilters.com, History Hunters and Firearm and Pick the Keys, Metal by Mora, and the John P. Salter Foundation. All sponsors can be found online and on most major social media outlets. Music provided by Big Steve and a train. That's a wrap, folks. Be sure to catch the next episode. Until then, 
Keep your nose clean if it takes both sleeves. And say nice things about it. Because I am gone. Don't wanna see no shame. 